there's a myth going round town that when you get older you just sit down and start rocking just rocking in a way that's true if you know what I mean just take a look at the senior scene well it's rocking so I'm Mike Gilliam and I'm a uh, volunteer at the Seymour Center and I've organized uh, over the years and other people before me a set of classes that people are interested in on technology we do a lot with phones these days and tablets but also computers and certain apps like the Google stuff and uh, <coughs> Pinterest and Ancestry, things like that. Uh, and I've developed a class on, uh, and it's really become a collection of ideas, things we can learn and share with each other to keep ourselves out of trouble. Getting hacked on computers, getting hacked on our phones. We're going to talk about ID theft, first of all, what it is, and then we'll talk a lot about how to protect yourself how to protect your devices, how to keep them up, just a little bit. We're not going to get technical here unless you want to. And then, and, and then uh, be sure, and I also want to mention before I'm done, backing up anything you have on a computer. Because if you're keeping files on a computer that are important to you and they're not backed up anywhere else, I promise you the day will come when you're going to be sorry you didn't have a backup. People have known for a long time, don't save things around the house and leave them around the house if you don't need them. Shred things that are not important any longer. Shred old checks. You've got an old checking account that may be closed, but the checks are sitting in a drawer. Get rid of them. Shred them. This county does shred a once a yeah, year. Yeah, there's one in October. Yeah. Look in your Roger house and find things, old tax returns that are no longer required. You don't keep, need to keep 100 years of tax returns. Go shred them. And, and you watch them get shredded, so that's the nice thing about a shred -a Social security numbers. It used to be that we said, be sure and protect your social security number. I don't think it's possible to protect your social security number. There are, there are websites called uh, the black websites, the dark web, it's called sometimes, where you can buy social security numbers that are yours and mine for a couple of bucks. Social security, social security number, you've you got to ask why you need this. What are you going to do with it? How are you going to protect it? Are you... Are you are you, have, there, have you ever been hacked? You can say, I refuse. But what are they going to do? You know, people will ask for information. You don't know who that person is calling. That caller ID can be, can be uh, tricked. You don't, there's, no, there's no proof just because the caller ID says it's so-and-so. Uh -huh. uh, there's no proof that it is. You cannot verify that it's true. Uh, so what you want to do is you want to look up what, if, if somebody says, I need to talk to you, you go look up what the, what the, customer service, phone number is, uh, and call them back. Uh, get the name and say, hey, I'm calling this person, do they work for you, can you connect me? On your credit card, it'll have the customer service phone, phone number. Don't answer the phone from somebody who says, I'm from your credit card company. Say, nope, you're not. I'll call you if there's a problem. You all know about the do not call list? You've certainly all heard about that, right? I, I checked that number the other day. And the, uh, the person on the recording says, if you've given us this number once, and you know you call from the phone you want to protect, and they detect it, and then they verify. You can call them back anytime to verify that it's still on there. But you can also use that number if you've been called by people. Robocalls, you can call that number back, and you wait, and you'll, you'll hear a prompt that says, push one if you want to report a fraud, or somebody that shouldn't be calling you. You can also go to do not call gov and you'll get the same kind of service. If you find like, if you sense that somebody's calling you and you sense fraud, uh, you can contact. That's the website NCDOJ. That's the Department of Justice in North Carolina, and report a, file a complaint. File a complaint. Credit card fraud. It's a big deal. It is so huge. Yeah, I've had it happen twice. Twice. I get calls sometimes. I use Chase Visa. I'll, I'll, somebody will say, for example. Did you spend five dollars on an adult website about midnight last night? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, 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 I didn't know a couple of. Weeks. No, I don't. I didn't. And they'll say, just checking. You know, fraud. Fraud is such a big deal. Credit card companies lose money all the time. But if you use a credit card, you protect it. But if you suspect fraud, call your uh, customer service people at the credit card company and tell them you suspect fraud. Uh, 
close any accounts you're never you're not using. If you've got accounts open that you don't use, close them because they're just an invitation for fraud. Shred all checks and deposit slips and things like that. Close all bank accounts and all credit card accounts that you don't use. Here's some things I've collected about children and grandchildren that we should all remember maybe one more time. Don't take pictures of kids and embarrass them. They're, they're, kids can get very much ashamed. That, that's just, that's just a, kind of an opening sentence. But, but be careful about taking pictures of kids. If you have a smartphone, there's a good chance that the picture you take will include in that picture that, the, the, the photo, the uh, geographic location of where that was taken. Right. Kids can have a sleepover party and start sending pictures, texting or Facebooking or Instagramming their friends and not realize that those pictures include which corner of the house their bedroom is. Wow. So you can, you can, and you want to show your, your grandchildren this, show them how to turn off the, the feature that says, I want to include geographic location in the photograph itself. Bullying is happening a lot. Instagram is a favorite way for kids to get bullied by their friends. The head of the guy that runs Instagram for Facebook is now telling, he told NPR last week while I was at the beach, I heard this interview, they're going to do a lot to help try to stop bullying, to give kids a way to turn off even and to block the bullying. But kids want to see what they're, what's being said about them so they can turn it back on. So now how do you manage that if you're trying to improve safety? I don't know what the answer is going to be, but doing things like getting away from everybody getting to say, I like this picture, I don't like that picture. If, if they can stop some of that, that'll be a big help. And then finally, back up. Assume that you're going to get hacked. Assume that your disk is going to fail or you're going to get a virus and your computer is no longer usable. So you want to ask yourself, if this computer is trashed, maybe I drop it on the way to the parking lot. What's on here that I'll be sorry I've lost? And if I've lost something, uh, if I know there's something there, I've got to ask myself, is it backed up right now? What I use is cloud backup. Three kinds of backup. You know, you could put a hard, little hard drive that you can get at Staples or Best Buy for under 100 bucks that has all the capacity you ever going to need. And you can do a, a complete disk image that continually is updated. Something simpler is just to once in a while send your important documents and pictures, your user files to the, that hard drive. It's, it plugs in just like your flash drive does. Disconnect it, maybe hide it in a different part of the house. Do it once a week, but keep doing it. Make sure it's a regular and automatic thing. Do you all know about credit freezes? The, the credit history, your credit history is so valuable so that if you haven't done the free credit history freezes, do them. You've got to call each one of the three, three uh, companies. If you go to the Federal Trade Commission and look up credit freezes, you, they will give you the phone numbers to call and the names. Experian is one, TransUnion is one, I forgot the third one. You, you, what you do is you do a freeze, you, you so, so that if somebody thinks they've got enough of your identity that they're going to go try to um, open a large loan in your name, like go buy a house and put it in your name, they'll have to go to these credit agencies to get your credit history because uh, nobody's going to give a, give a mortgage to somebody without, without validating credit history. You have to have a password. Now, if you do a freeze on that history, you get a password, oh, and if okay. you want to open a ne next credit card or a, a second mortgage on your house, you have to have the unlock your history, oh, okay. and that's what a freeze is. You show me the password, I'll, I'll unlock your history. So there's the freeze, and you want to have a freeze on all three of these companies, including Equifax, TransUnion, and the other one, <laughs> and, and I should write these on the slide. You, you can go to each one of these and ask for a free credit report, which says, here, are, here were any any um, attempts to look at your credit history, any transactions that happened, you want to verify that nothing bad happened as well. So while you're getting a credit, a freeze put on, also do, before you put it on, get a, get a report of the credit history. But we do it at the same time so you can see, I'm okay so far, now I've got a freeze going forward. If I ever need your credit card, I'll have to unfreeze. And you can, in fact, you can ask the credit card company which, which one, which of these agencies you use, go to them and unfreeze it, do the credit card, get the new card and then come back. I, I'm not going to do a very technical discussion this morning, but, but I, I, I have another in-depth presentation that kind of goes, goes off where we leave off here this morning. But here's what it says to do. Uh, there was an article in the Times, New York Times, uh, I think it started on the 12th of September. 
It's called uh, Securing Your Digital Life, I think it's called. Uh, it's called Secure Your Digital Life in Seven Easy Days. Seven things you should do. What they say to do is pay attention to all these pieces of hardware you have and the software that's on them. Don't just, don't just say, oh, that's too hard. I don't understand. I'm not sure I know how to do this. Programs are, you know how often your phone gets updated. Probably not enough, but the apps on your phone need to be updated too. So this is kind of a, this is kind of a, we're, we're all, we're all, we all love the convenience of having instant availability to our uh, money and our purchases and our history and the history of the world and our children's photographs and so forth. But we got to, we got to be aware that somebody's thinking, how can I hack into your phone? But, but you can block pop-ups and you can block uh, tracking and as long as it's done, Safely, you may have to agree to a little bit of ads. I use something called um, pop-up blocker. I mean, sorry, right up there, the little red stop sign. This little guy right here is called ABP, Auto uh, Ad Block. I'm sorry, Ad Block Plus. Auto Block, Ad Block Plus. Ad Block Plus. And what, it's, what it does is it stops unruly pop-up ads. So the industry is so impressed with this device, this company called Adblock Plus, that it has agreed to conform to nice, polite ads down the left side once in a while. And, uh, the, and so you, when you install this, and it's free, you can tell it, I want to block all ads, I want to block the, the naughty ads, or no ads. And you'll see as you go from page to page when, this bra when your browser has had this what's called an extension for this, this uh, blocking tool, it'll have a little number up there that says how many, on this page, how many ads we saw and how many of them are being blocked. Wow. Some, some of the ad pages I go to will say, hey, you're using this uh, pop-up blocker, please turn it off because I, I need to make a living. So kind of, they kind of wind their way oh into it. Oh my God. But, and I'll turn it on and I'll see and I'll turn it back off. User what? accounts, if, if, if you have a computer, Set yourself up a user account so that your files are contained within that user account. If you run your computer as the admin authority, everything's exposed to, to uh, kids as well as viruses. So think about starting up your computer in a, in a, a user account as opposed to an ad. You, when, when you buy your computer, it comes off the shelf at the store running just the admin account and no password. Put, put a password on the admin account and then create yourself a user account and put a password on that. See over here at the bottom, right, that little guy right there? Can you see where I'm yeah, pointing? Yeah. Okay, turn on uh, yeah. the start screen and go to settings here. Okay, settings. Yeah. Settings and right there, accounts. Right. So when you're signed in as with full authority as the admin person, that's what you start out as. You, you click that and you can say, I want to, now I'm signed in as a user, so I don't have that authority, but right along here somewhere, it would say people and family and things like that, other people. It'll be, you'll see it right around here. I'm not, <coughs> I'm not uh, where I can show it, but this, you, you will see. Or if you're not sure, just type right there, create new account in that search window. This is Windows 10 settings. I want to create an, uh, an account, and if you're an admin, it will say, oh, do you want to create a user account? And you say, yes, that's exactly what I want, and give it a password. How many accounts do you all have on your, in your life that you can get uh, access to through your computer? How many would you say? I use, a, I use a password manager called 1Password. I used to use a piece of paper, a spreadsheet, mm -hmm. and then I, had, I, I got my first smartphone. And I didn't want to have to carry this around with me. I know. Uh, and so I would, well, I'd try to sign into the bank from my smartphone, and it would say, what's your password? And I'd, say, I'd have to say, forgot password, and go yeah. through all oh, that stuff. I know. Now you've got a piece of paper at home, and you're saying, I want a new password, right. and the paper's not there. Yeah. So now you have, not, now, you're, now the password's out of date on your piece of paper. Yeah. So, so you better remember what it is. And I that's know. just one account. And if you start doing that, that's why people get in that, you know, I'm going to use, I'm so tired of this, I'm going to use the same password for everything. Because I can remember my, my first husband's daughter's dog. dog, yes. And nobody will ever guess. 
But you've got to have complex passwords and change them, keep changing them, and keep changing them, and keep changing them. And it's not How fun. It's terrible. It's terrible. And if you have tried to do it in two places or three places, <laughs> that's what... So I use, I'll show you a slide of what it looks like, but a password manager is so much more secure than a piece of paper because you can always update it. You can secure it with a really long password itself, like four random words with special characters in between that you can remember, hopefully. That's the thing. And, and I certainly recommend you do that. The other thing I recommend you do is this thing called two-factor or two-level authentication. Do you all do that? I don't have it, any idea it, what that What that is. means. Okay, let's say you want to check, just want to check the balance in your, your checking mm -hmm. account because you've got to buy something and you're not right. sure the most recent deposit is cleared yet. So you sign on to your bank account with what? An ID and a password. Yes. Banks are saying, hey, they're, they're giving you the chance to say, I don't think that's enough. I don't trust that. Right. Bank, you need to send me on my phone and nowhere else in the world a six-digit, random six digits, one-time use that we're going to throw away in 30 seconds if you, don't, if you don't use that to sign into the second level of authentication before you can see your account balance. That's called two-factor, two-level authentication. Okay, so this is what... This is what it looks like to run the password manager. Now, you can't do this with a piece of paper. This, this app is called 1Password, and it runs on my PC and on my iPhone. You know, one's Microsoft, one's Apple, and they get along pretty well, thank goodness. So let's say I want to check, uh, you know, I get a message saying, uh, uh, my doctor is part of the UMC healthcare system. So I want to, get a, I want to read a secure message about my personal health. So I go to, uh, it's, it's not an app for healthcare at, for UNC, it's a web page that if you use, you have no choice, you have to use a web page. So you go to a web page called myuncchart.org. And here's where I could, if I used your method, I could copy and paste my ID and password, not typing, but copying and pasting. This goes one step further. See where it says password? Mm -hmm. The iPhone knows that there's a password manager installed. It doesn't care which one it is, but when I type, tap the word password, up comes the password manager, and that's that. that this is a screenshot of my iPhone on a, on a Windows screen now. And right there it says you can enter the master password, which is several words, which don't make any sense. It's not a sentence, it's random words. Or that little thumbprint logo just below that, I can tap that and then it'll say, okay, give me your thumbprint. And then it'll take, it'll look up what my ID and password are. It actually plugs in my ID and my password. Where are the passwords stored? Ah, that's a good question. Where are they? The password manager is an app. The password manager is an app that uh, has your, it's as a file of things like IDs and passwords for computer screen logons. It's got my passport information, it's got my driver's license, it's got an image of my Medicare card in it, it's got um, medicines, it's got prescriptions in it, things like that in it. And it's in the cloud. That's where it is, it's in the cloud. That's why I have a problem. That's right. You, you, you should. You should all be suspicious of everything. The cloud. Yep. Because the cloud can get hacked. Mm -hmm. The cloud is just a bunch of computers. Yep. But, but don't, don't, you're not speaking for me. I say, I say that I trust this. And, and it's, it is worth it. Because if you say, what are all the things that can go wrong? Yeah, this could go wrong, and then this could go wrong, and Hillary can get hacked, and on and on and on. But you can go crazy. You can go crazy. So the question is, how do we beat the odds? What are all the things that I could do in a day? Leave a piece of paper somewhere, lose, lose a file, and the file itself gets hacked. Uh, all, thing, all things are possible. But what, what this app does is it plugs in my ID and password for me so that I just have to tap in the sign-in. I, I don't know what the password is there. Here's the, here's the uh, two-factor or two-level authentication. I, here's my, this is on the iPhone again, signing into my checking account at Wells Fargo. I want to check the, uh, check the uh, account, status of the account, you know, the balance. And the first thing it says is uh, it, you could sign in with your uh, ID and password. And I use the password manager for that. But then I told the bank ahead of time, from now on, when anybody signs into this account, they have to use, for safety, you want to force them to use two levels of authentication. And that means we're going to use, a, uh, in this case, with, with that bank, it's a six-digit text. So on the right, after I signed in using my password manager, the first two things, ID and password, on the right, it's going to say, okay, 
we're going to send you a test. Yeah. And and it's it you maybe you can read that. It's got the last four of my phone number, and I I say get code. That blue button is get code. Okay. And I get a text. I get a text, and I have to type this in. I have to manually type in the six digits on the left there, and on the right, when I type it in, because this is a demo, that text was used once and it's gone now, I just type it in and then I hit submit and I'm into the account. I think they automatically do that. You have to set it up. Uh, you have to set it up. I guess when I called them recently, then that's what they did. Yes, yeah, they want you to do it. They want you to... It, it, very if, helpful. If a banker knows you've got it these days, you've got a smartphone, you should not be just using ID and password. Um, and that's it. You should be using the second level thing. Yeah. So, we, we, we could make an endless list of things that are good ideas to keep us safe, right? But some of them are, only get apps from people you trust. You put an app on your computer, like Uber, and it's a, we trust Uber, but it, it can get hacked. Apparently, it can get hacked. So, what do you do? You've got to go back and check all the apps on your phone or your computer and make sure they're up to date. If you've got an iPhone like me, I, I have to go to the app store, search for Uber, and it'll say it's installed, but if, it's, if, if your version is not as current as the one on the app store, it'll say update, and you just touch it and it's updated. A lot of times Apple will update them for you and sometimes they won't, and I'm not sure what the rule is. Mm -hmm. Only go to safe websites. Do you know how to tell if a website is safe? You can't really tell. But there are apps you can get. There's, a, there's an app called Web of Trust, and you install it as an extension to your browser. And when you Google a website, there'll be a little, let's see if I can show you this. I think I'm running it right now. Oh yeah, right here. See, I am running the a browser extension in Chrome called Web of Trust. And see the little green guy right there? <laughs> That's it? That, that little green symbol was put on by the browser extension for the Department of Justice website. It says it's safe. It's really safe. Oh, wow. Five stars. <laughs> and see, WOT, if you Google WOT, uh, you can, you, yeah, but the way to, way to do this, so what you do is you go to your browser, and this is what you want to do. You can search for an extension to extend the features of your browser, whether it's Safari, or whether it's uh, Edge, or whether it's uh, anything else, you can add extensions to, like, here's the extension for my password manager. There's Adblock Plus. Uh, uh, let's see, here, here's Web of Trust. This is the extension for Chrome on Windows 10, and it helps you get a sense of whether or not a, a website is trustworthy. And you suggest Chrome, because I don't believe I use it. I, I, use the, I teach the Google apps, so I, they're always changing, and so I just decided to use Chrome because it runs the Google apps better than the other, a little bit better than the other browsers do. But if you were using Firefox, you would go to the Firefox extensions function and say, I want to find Web of Trust, and it'll be there. And you should get the same green dot. If you get a red dot, you don't want to click on that, right? Never click on a pop-up ad. There's no such thing as a free lunch. You are the free lunch for them if you click on it at length that you don't know. That's a good but finally, the last thing is backup, backup, backup. Make sure you back up. Okay, here's a slide I use in my class over at the Seymour Center. Which of these links do you think is safe? Don't tell us. Let us each. Okay. Click here and win a free bag of groceries from Harris Teeter. All you got to do is click this. And we'll send you a coupon for a free bag of groceries. Gosh, it's free. Let's see. Uh, no such no thing. No such thing. Yeah, that's, that's where that would take you. Uh, here's Facebook. See, a link doesn't have to be words. A link can be a picture, too. Not oh. actually. Oh. Not actually Facebook.com. These are, I just made these this, up. Just, oh, you did? Somewhere in Russia, huh. Instagram. So I just I just took this logo off the web and put a, put a link behind it. Ukraine. Ukraine's worst. <laughs> Ukraine's worst. Here is now. This is a true story. This came from the New York Times. Uh, a, 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 a staff member of the Democratic National Committee got this message saying, "Someone just use your password to try to sign into your Google account. Change your password. Click here." <laughs> Guess what happened? <laughs> He was hacked, just that fast. Wow. 
And, and it, that, that was done by the Russians. They did a lot of this, fishing for people's addresses. This is, this is a legitimate, uh, G, this was, was a Gmail account. I for, it, the article gave the person's name, an officer in the DNC. Boy, if somebody knocks at your door and you don't trust them, you certainly are free to call the police anytime you want. Because if they've gone to your house, or they've gone to your neighbor's house, and they're going to go to the next one until they get stopped. If people don't identify themselves, and you don't think they're telling the truth, even if they do identify themselves, right. something, call the police anyway and say, hey, should this person be here? Is this allowed? Any complaints about this kind of a pitch on, on, in this neighborhood? And the police will say, you're totally in, in your rights to call and, and ask the question. So whether it's on knocking at your door, or whether it's calling you on the phone, or whether it's getting you an email, or a text, or an Instagram, or a tweet, or a WhatsApp, or on and on and on, be skeptical and ask questions and don't trust anybody until you know what you're doing. So, so this is the this is the Seymour Tech website. This is the homepage, and it's www.seymourtechcenter.org, and that's the homepage. And here's the little free uh, line menu. And here's the sidebar here. And if you want to see the classes we'll be teaching this semester, that's right here. And then I put this up just for you all. I added this this morning. This is called Additional Resources Mentioned in Our Classes. And there's only one so far, and this is it. Oh, wow. And this is, I copied and pasted the seven daily emails, seven days in a row, that this fellow that works for the Times put together. One topic each day, starting with password manager, and how to use it, and examples on, on iPhone and so forth. And, and he recommends typically a free one and a fee one, whatever the topic is, and he'll say the free one has is good enough, but the fee one has better tutorials, and it'll tell you whether your website has a second level uh, authentication process and what kind it is, so things like that. So, so it's actually a link, so you have to click that uh -huh. to go to a Google Doc, wait for it, here it comes. So I copied and pasted okay. this header and then, doing and then the, seven, the seven days, it goes on and on and on. And he has links too. He'll say, if you really want to worry, click here. It's worse than, <laughs> it's worse than you thought. I'm already worried. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. I'm screwed. Yeah. We all are. I am really screwed. We all are. But be skeptical. I'm going to quit using the. Don't click on anything until you know what it is. I better go get a flip phone. So that is all I have. Wow. Well, it's a lot of good info. Good. And so that's my email address there. If you want to, send, if you find something you'd like to send me that you've discovered, we can be a team from now on. We can we can put on this session again here, bring the rest of the folks in, or do it. It's really important. We'll come to the Seymour Center, we have a classroom situation, it's a little easier than this to teach from. We paid our dues all those years, and it's so nice to be switching gears. It's a grand new century, and it's the senior life, the senior life, the senior life for me.